Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today we are going to discuss about intraosseous access. Intraosseous access is used if we are failing to get a peripheral intravenous access. Uh, if in a case of cardiac arrest, if we are not able to get an intravenous access and thereby give medications, then we will be planning to go for an intraosseous access. And it is more preferred as compared to placing a central line or a uh, venous cut down in case of a cardiac arrest. Another indication of intraosseous access is a uh, shock. Uh, because of shock, the veins might be collapsed, so we will not be getting a uh, vein. So we will be uh, planning on an intraosseous access. So uh, by uh, do, uh, getting an intraosseous access, we will be uh, inserting a needle into the uh, bones, thereby it will go into the uh, medullary sinus, which will drain into the emissary veins and thereby uh, it will ultimately end up in the central vein of the long bone and then it will drain into the corresponding vein. So, uh, uh, so the main indications are in case of cardiac arrest when we are not able to get intravenous access because intravenous access is the best access and if we are failing to get that then only we will be planning to go for an intraosseous access. So and uh, the other indication is a shock where we are not able to get any peripheral venous access. Okay, um, so we will tell about the sites. Sites we can either go for a proximal tibia or we can go for a distal tibia or we can go for a distal femur. So uh, proximal tibia, if you are going into a proximal tibia, it will uh, be told everything will ultimately drain into the central vein of that uh, long bone. Then it will be draining into the popliteal vein if you are going, going and puncturing into the tibial vein. Uh, sorry, that uh, proximal tibia. If we are uh, uh, planning to puncture to the distal tibia, then it will be draining into the great saphenous vein. And if you are planning to puncture onto the distal femur, then it will be going into the femoral vein. And if you are planning to puncture on to the proximal part of humerus, it will be drained by the axillary vein. And if you are planning to puncture into the manubrium sterne, then it will be drained by the assegus vein or the internal mammary veins. So uh, these are some of the main sites where we insert the IO axis. So in case of children less than one year age and all, we will be uh, selecting the proximal tibia. Or if that fails, we can plan on going for the uh, distal femur. So uh, proximal tibia, if we are selecting, the site is uh, 1 cm inferior to the uh, tibial tuberosity. And if it is the uh, proximal part of, uh, sorry, the distal femur, then it will be uh, 1 cm proximal to the upper border of the uh, patella. And if it is the uh, distal tibia which we are selecting. Distal tibia is usually not taken in case of infant. If it, the child is more than one year, then we then only we will be planning to do the distal tibia. So uh, it will be uh, one centimeter above the medial malleolus. And if you are planning to go for a um, uh, proximal humerus or the medial uh, manubrium sternae, then that, that should be done only in case of adults or in case of children more than 12 years of age. That will be, uh, so if it is proximal humerus, it will be 1 cm below the acromion process. So uh, these are the different sites uh, and the uh, we have already told about the sites where we select. Uh, so in children, if you are not getting an access, the most preferred one is the proximal part of the tibia. And we I uh, mentioned where all to puncture. Then uh, how to insert this IV axis? Uh, sorry, the IO axis. We will not use an IV needle for that, uh, IV cannula for that because IV cannula can get clogged. So either we have to use a uh, Jamshidi needle or the bone marrow needle or we can uh, use sp uh, specific bone, uh, IO axis uh, equipments like a bone injection gun or a, a battery powered gun can be used to insert an IO axis. So uh, if we are planning to, so here I will be demonstrating how to use a bone marrow aspiration needle or a IO axis uh, needle, how to insert that, that we will be discussing now. So what all equipments should be kept ready? So all the sterile precautions should be taken. It, uh, we are planning to puncture onto the bone. We don't want to un unnecessarily introduce an infection to that patient. So uh, we want gloves, gown and all personal protective equipments. We want the needle then we want 
a, a syringe to aspirate and see whether it is come, uh, whether, whether the bone marrow is coming out once we are inside the uh, bone and then we will be uh, uh, also uh, taking the local anesthetic if the patient is not in cardiac arrest if the patient is conscious then we will have to give local anesthetic also so this much things should be prepared okay and uh, before inserting an io access we should know what all are the contraindications so it is contraindicated in cases of uh, previous attempt of puncturing into that bone or uh, if the bone is infected because of some osteomyelitis or something if there is some local burns or local pathology seen uh, or cellulitis seen then we are not uh, we should not puncture into that area because that will introduce a new infection if that bone is already fractured then the vein supplying to that might also get uh, blocked or there can be injury to that so uh, that is a contraindication so the fracture of that particular bone is a contraindication for io access to that area and previous attempt that i have already mentioned so these are the contraindications and uh, during the procedure uh, i will be uh, talking about how to insert uh, the io needle into the proximal tibia so during the procedure uh, if it is in the proximal tibia we will have to keep the knee uh, keep the leg in a neutral position then we will have to slightly external rotate uh, because we are planning to puncture medial to the tibial tuberosity so we have to externally rotate uh, the leg uh, by either uh, if we are uh, having an assistant we can ask the other person to hold on to the angle of the uh, patient and slightly external rotate it then uh, we will be uh, selecting the io axis needle and we will have to uh, make sure that the beveled edge is facing upwards and then we will be inserting it so we will be inserting it and uh, while we are inserting we should hold it distally like this and when we are puncturing we will be puncturing it perpendicular to the bone and we will be inserting it uh, in a uh, rotatory fashion we will not be uh, moving it very much sideways because that will make the hole more bigger so we will be twisting and inserting it inside uh, we will be giving that pressure inside but we will not be giving a lateral pressure uh, so that is how we do that i will just demonstrate that so first we will have to palpate the patella then we will have to palpate the bony prominence that is the tibial tuberosity then just in uh, one centimeter inferior and medial to the tibial tuberosity we will be inserting this needle so i will be holding on to this needle like this to the distal part i will be holding like this and then i will be inserting so the assistant should hold the lower limb external rotated like this and i will be after palpating that i will be puncturing on to the bone so when I am puncturing, I am going in a rotatory fashion and once I insert, I will get a giveaway feeling. So after getting the giveaway feeling, then I should make uh, fix that in my hand. I should make sure that it shouldn't come out because in case of a cardiac arrest scenario and all, uh, CPR might be ongoing. So the needle might come out. So uh, we will have to hold on to that. We will have to unscrew it and we will be aspirating and seeing whether the bone marrow is coming or not so here we can see the uh, marrow part is coming here so uh, we are we will confirm the position and then we can give the medications uh, through this access we can give all sort of medications and even blood products can be given uh, through this io access uh, but if we are planning to give adenosine and all the half life of adenosine is only 10 seconds so in that case adenosine effect might not be um, got uh, with that dose of adenosine the effect will not be got but uh, other everything even the blood products all the drugs can be given through the io access and after getting this io access there is a high chance that this uh, needle might come out so we should um, we should fix it with tapes and adhesive dressing should be kept uh, then uh, how long can we keep this io access so we can keep this io access only for maximum 10 to 36 hours because as we keep it longer there is high chance of infection so maximum 36 hours below beyond that we will not be keeping this io access and um, uh, what all are the con um, complications associated with io access so if this patient is having a very fragile bone and all there is high risk of fracture if you are inserting and uh, 
inserting onto the skin there can be skin necrosis then there can be subcutaneous abscesses can be there or there can be osteomyelitis of the bone can be there uh, and even compartment syndrome if at all we are not confirming the position by uh, each time and if at all this medicine extra visits there can be con a compartment syndrome so these are the uh, sorry complications of io axis so we have talked about io axis so uh, it is preferred only if uh, we fail to get a iv axis and in case of cardiac arrest we will be using that and uh, in children, the most preferred one is the proximal tibia. We will be uh, inserting it medial to the uh, tibial tuberosity. Then we will be aspirating and seeing whether we are, we are in the med, uh, place or not. And then we will be uh, giving all the medications through that. And even blood products can also be given through that. Make sure that the, all the contraindications of IO axis are not there like osteomyelitis, fracture or any local pathologies like cellulitis. All these things shouldn't be there. So after making sure that then we can insert this IO axis and we can um, secure it and we can uh, use it up to maximum of 36 hours. In order to remove the IO needle, we will have to grasp the shaft and remove by rotatory action. Thank you.